happy about that. Proverbs chapter number one, um, we're going to start looking through Proverbs here and just seeing what kind of wisdom is in there and just really, um, you know, just really what, um, what Solomon has to tell us here. Um, Proverbs chapter number one, verse 20 through the end of the chapter, verse 33. So Proverbs 1, verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief, chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Excuse me one second. All right, well, I'm hoping that the uh, snow is going to start killing my allergies so um, when it starts freezing, so that's pretty good. But um, if you've ever been to um, if you ever been to a carnival or a fair or anything, and you see all kinds of things that draw your attention, um, there's excessively priced food, like $7 snow cones. Uh, we were at a carnival here this year, 7 bucks for frozen water and syrup colored flavored syrup that that's i think that's the difference no <laughs> we found the four dollar ice cream cones <laughs> it was better than the eight dollar ice cream cones um rides they're trying to be more thrilling all the time sideshows and games to entertain you i mean you go to carnival you see all this stuff and we were at the central states fair this year and uh, one man in particular he caught my attention um, he was trying to get track people to his booth to play a game and knock over the milk bottles. And, man, he was just, you know, flamboyant. He was just out there just, man, I'm like, that guy's good at what he does. Um, he had a commanding voice, and it was really hard to miss or ignore him. I mean, he was there just, uh, you, you went by, and he just wanted to just chuckle, laugh, or, or something. I mean, this guy was just hilarious. And his goal, he was trying to get you to listen up and participate in his game. He's trying to draw you in and attract you to that game. Well, like that carnival man, Solomon here in Proverbs personifies wisdom as a person in the busy places calling the people to come to wisdom. And wisdom is calling to those who do not have her. Wisdom is calling out to those, like that carnival man, come play this game. Wisdom is calling, come to me. I, I want to give you wisdom. She warns also the consequences of rejecting her. Um, and she also offers the rewards for hearing her. And this morning, we're going to step through wisdom's cry to us. So let's open up in prayer, and we're going to look at this this morning. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house. And Lord, I just um, thank you for the moisture. And Lord, I just pray that... You keep people safe coming in today and traveling back home, Lord, with the weather. And, Lord, um, just pray that you give me a clear mind today and show me, Lord, the words to speak. And open our hearts today to receive your word. And, Lord, I just pray for your blessing on the services here today in Jesus' name. Amen. So, as we step through this here, Solomon, um, again, personification. Uh, you learn this in literature amongst among a lot of other things that are really cool. Um, this has nothing to do with any of the message, but um, one of my favorite things in literature was an onomatopoeia, which is words that sound like what they mean, like bang, crash, kaboom, 
know, that has nothing to do with anything. I just think that's cool. But anyway, in literature, personification is giving um, human attributes to an, an inanimate or a non, um, non-person object. Like the Bible says the trees clap their hands. Okay, trees don't clap their hands, but it gives you that picture of their swaying around, um, you know, uh, things like that. And here, wisdom is personified literally as a person, as a woman, who is begging men to come to her for wisdom. Um, Verse number 20, wisdom crieth without. So we're going to first of all look at where wisdom beckons, where wisdom is. First of all, she is without. Now, she's not in a confined place that a few people frequent. Okay, she's not just in like a house or like some small business somewhere, though that's not though um, I believe she is there too, but she's not just in a small place that very few people can find her. She is everywhere basically that men can be, kind of like a cell phone. Tell me where you can go where you won't see a cell phone. Even in the mountains, people have cell phones. <laughs> we went backpacking um, during COVID. We were at 10,000 feet, and we had our okay. We had our cell phones so we could take pictures. Okay, <laughs> but would you believe it? 10,000 feet. I had service. <laughs> what in the world? I go there to get out of that. <sighs> Man, that was weird. But my point is, where can you go where you're not going to see a cell phone? It's pretty rare. Pretty rare. But wisdom's like that. She is basically everywhere that men can be. Look at verse 20 again. She is crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. You know, the streets are what people use to get to where they're going. You know, sometimes they have, you know, things going on like farmers markets and stuff on the streets. But whether you're heading to the store, going to work, biking to school, on our way to a doctor's visit, wherever you're going, wisdom is crying out to you to listen. And what's wisdom saying? We're going to get to some of that in a minute here, but she's, but she's everywhere. She's looking like, hey, see that, pers- see that person over there? You know, doing something that, you know, maybe they- see that couple living together in fornication? There's consequences to that later in your life. That's wisdom. Do you see this person, you know, driving too fast, got pulled over? There's consequences for that. That's wisdom. Wisdom is saying, hey, look at life. Learn from me. Learn from wisdom. So she's in the streets. Look at verse 21. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. Concourse. Now, I had to look that one up because the only thing I can think of is an airport terminal, really. But it actually, ha- that word means something interesting here. Concourse means it's a very loud and disorderly place. <laughs> doesn't, that, doesn't that well define an airplane terminal? <laughs> it's noisy, crowded, always moving. But that's where wisdom is. The place where people are, you know, that congregate, where it's like disorderly. You know, you think of in Bible times like a market area or somewhere where there's just people everywhere mulling around. It's loud. It's noisy. It's kind of disorderly. That's where wisdom, she's calling out in the busiest of places, in the shops, in the airports, sports events. I mean, go to a sporting event. I don't know of one that doesn't sell booze. Hey, there's wisdom there. And the Bible says, he that tarrieth long at the wine is not wise. I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little there, but the Bible gives, like, look what it does to people. There's wisdom here. Watch this. You know, there's wisdom everywhere. The place of concourse. Verse 21 again, in the openings of the gates. You know, the gates of the city was where a place um, where business was transacted or legal matters were conducted back in the day where they had um, walls around the cities. And wisdom's there. Wisdom is reaching out her hand in government. 
Wisdom's reaching out her hand in the workplace, courtroom, places like that. Wisdom is reaching out saying, come to me, listen to me. She's everywhere. Last place here, verse 21. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, and we're going to get to that in just a second here. In the city, <coughs> that's where the population is the most dense, where the most people are, but typically where the sin is the worst. I mean, where do you, if, you want to, um, if you want to see where the most sin is, where do you look? The town of 100 people? Or do you look at the city of a million? Where are the gangs? Where, you know, where is the, where's the most, where's all the drug deals? Mostly in the cities. Now, I'm not going to say that stuff does not happen out in those rural places. I know it does. We lived in Osage. We knew who all the sex offenders were and where they lived. <laughs> you just kind of know. It's there too. But this city is where it is the most where is the most? And even in the best or worst places, wisdom wants men and women to hear and to follow her plea, her cry. So pretty much, wisdom is calling to us anywhere we can be. What was her message? So you see where wisdom beckons next, wisdom's plea. And this is verse 22. She says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? First of all, she, she asks, how long will the simple love simplicity? Again, simple, simplicity, both these words have the same, really the same meaning, and it means being simple-minded, or someone who's easily deceived, somebody you can sway very easily. They don't have any, they're not solid in anything, they don't have a foundation to their belief, they're very, very easily swayed. Um, the Bible says, like, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He's tossed about like a wave of the sea. And just, oh, this way. Oh, now we can go this way. Somebody who you try, you try and tell them something, they'll go, they'll go where you're going. But somebody else comes along and tells them something, they go do it. They go do something opposite. They don't even think about it. Wisdom here, she's talking about these people who enjoy living in ignorance and being naive. There's some people, you know, you, you see them like, all you need is a little instruction, <laughs> and you'll be okay. And they would probably listen to it and do okay. But there's some people, they enjoy being ignorant. There's some people who enjoy it. And, ignor and ignorance, wisdom is calling out saying, how long are you going to love that? In other words, you're heading down the wrong road. I'm here to help you. You know, are there things in your life that are easily, that are weakened or easily swayed? You know, maybe listening to off-color stories at work, but not at home. Some things where you're around a different crowd, you can do what they'll do, but when you're in a different place, you don't do those things. You know, that's, you know, that that's kind of what I'm talking about here. Or, you know, just things like that where <coughs> you get around one crowd, you do what they do. You get around another crowd, you don't. That's not wisdom. And wisdom saying, hey, calling to you. Wisdom is asking, how long will you remain simple? I'm sorry, that's what the Bible calls it, simple. I do it too. I mean, I've been there. <laughs> how long is simple? You love simplicity. Second, she asks in verse 22, and the scorners delight in their scorning. So she's asking again, wisdom's asking, how long will the scorners take pleasure in scorning? A scorner is basically one who mocks, who mocks at things. Um, these are people who take, so what she's talking about here, people who take pleasure in ridiculing. I believe what she's talking about is people who ridicule godly things. Someone who just really mocks, I mean, even down the simple, you're like, you're just a goody two-shoes. Or... Why would you, you're like, why in the world would you go to church every Sunday? Or just even down to where people are downright mean. Someone who mocks, or someone who even mocks at the Bible, like, um, you can't even believe it. But even God's children can be scorners, which is scary. For example, if someone's following the Lord with all their heart, we can put them down and even try and discourage them. 
You know, it's sad. I've seen that before. Like, say, a person gets saved, you know, and they're excited, and they start cleaning things out of their life. You know, they're just excited about it. And, and we look and say, oh, they'll learn. How about we encourage them instead in what they're doing, instead of discouraging them from serving God? Wisdom is asking us, are you ready to trade your mocking for wisdom? That's what wisdom's asking. And the third question she asks here, end of verse 22, and fools hate knowledge. A fool, man, the Bible has, you know what's neat? Fool is spoken of mostly in Proverbs. I think it was 13 times. There's once in Ecclesiastes and once in Job. And that's like, Proverbs has much to say about a fool. A fool is one that is proud, wicked, and follows. Really what it is is they follow their flesh instead of God. That is an interesting definition. They follow their flesh more than God instead of the Lord. But it typically also goes along with pride and wickedness. Um, I looked up the definition of a fool, and Webster also puts it this way. A fool can be, quote, a weak Christian, a godly person who has much remaining sin and unbelief. <laughs> Noah Webster was a pretty good theologian. And sometimes I can get some good conviction out of just reading the definition of words. Ouch, a weak Christian, a godly person who has much remaining sin and unbelief. And you know where he got that definition? From the Bible. It's a person, a fool is a person here. What, um, wisdom's crying out to a person that despises knowledge in place of pleasure. Who, for, who rejects knowledge for the pleasure of the flesh. So when we act in the flesh or follow the flesh, <laughs> we are choosing foolishness instead of wisdom. It's not just going after the flesh. When we go after the things of the flesh, when we give in to those desires of the flesh, we are following foolishness instead of wisdom. Even something as simple as drinking too much pop when we know that the effects of that will be. Been there. <laughs> you know, when you know it's like, I should stop doing this, but I don't because I enjoy it too much. I've been there. You know, then there's effects from it. Your teeth start rotting out. You start, ha you know, you start having sugar highs. You have crashes, whatever. There's effects from it. You know, or it can even be like giving into anger and lashing out on people. Anger, you know, it's not, I don't believe it's wrong in of itself, but what do you do with that? When you, when you let it lash out on people, okay, you're not, you're living in the flesh. You're not controlling that emotion there. That's choosing foolishness is when we act foolishly on it. You know, as God's children, we can act foolishly. Wisdom calls to the ones that need her. She's calling out to the simple, the scorner, the foolish. But what is she calling for? Here, she, here's what she says, verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. Turn you at my reproof. Like we're talking about, um, I was talking about a while ago with what um, what should be in a sermon. It says reprove. Reproof is that form of that word. It's to point out something that is wrong. Wisdom is saying, hey, you're going the wrong way. Turn. You're going the wrong way. She's not sitting there saying, you stupid idiot, what are you doing? She's saying, hey, you're going the wrong way. Don't go that way. Wisdom is showing men that there's <coughs> that their simple-minded mocking and foolish ways. She's pointing that out and begging them to turn from it to avoid shipwreck in their lives. We're going to see that here in a minute. Um, the consequences for ignoring wisdom. Um, again, in 2 Timothy 3.16 that we looked at. Um, oh, please turn there. Hold your place in Proverbs. We're going to come back. But 2 Timothy 3.16 for a minute here. Please turn there with me. See, it's not just the job of wisdom 
for reproof. It is the job of the Word of God, of a sermon to do reproof. 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Word of God says here it's good for doctrine, what is right, for reproof, what's wrong, that showing what's wrong, of correction, how to get right, instruction in righteousness, how to stay right. I heard a preacher tell, explain it that way. I'm like, that is such a good explanation of that verse right there. But the Word of God shows us, it reproves us. And so what wisdom is doing, she's calling to us saying, hey, see that person or see what's going on here. See this event or look at what's happening in, right in front of you. There are consequences to this. You see that teenager dobbling in drugs. There's something to learn here. And also, do you see that person making that right choice? It's not just what people are doing wrong. You see, this person, they're honest. Like somebody gives them too much change back. They give them and say, hey, you gave me the wrong amount. See that person being honest? Learn from that. That's pleasing to the Lord. See, there's wisdom everywhere. She's saying, hey, turn you at my reproof. And our job is when we hear the reproof of wisdom or the Word of God, for that matter, our job is to turn from the way we're going to the way wisdom and God's Word directs. That's our job. She says, turn at my reproof. There's no alternatives. <laughs> She's saying, here, I'm calling to you, turn at the reproof. And what will happen when we do that? Verse 23, turn you at my reproof. Behold. In other words, attention. Here's what happens when you do this. I will pour out my spirit unto you. That's neat. Um, looking at this word spirit, it really has, I think, the idea of life. Just life. Living. Vitality. When we turn at the reproof of wisdom, she then pours out life to us. Now, get this picture here. It's not just... Here you go. It's pouring out. I mean, picture a big... Okay, if you've been to camp, here, here's, a, here's a good picture for you. So water day, we have a lot of old buckets full of water balloons and stuff. And after all the carnage, it's all said and done when the kids have just pummeled each other and there's not a square inch of dry space on anybody. I try and make sure of that. <laughs> we have buckets full of water. Now, what do I do? I kick those over to make sure the kids don't pick them up and just pour them on somebody, or the leaders, or the counselors, or anybody else for that matter. Mostly I'm trying to protect myself, okay? There's a secret. I don't want anyone picking it up. For some reason, okay, i step over here. For some reason, everyone wants to get the rec director. I don't understand that. I just make them play all these games. I annoy them, I irritate them, tease them all week, and they want to throw water balloons at me. I don't get it. Not really. <laughs> I love it. But a bucket full of water, pouring it out on somebody. That's that picture here. Wisdom wants to pour out life to us. And I don't believe this is talking about the good and comfortable life. You know, there's a lot of, there's some people out there that want to say, you know, you trust God and God's going to make your life better. Well, that's not necessarily true. He can. Sometimes he does. But I believe it's talking about not a comfortable life, but a fulfilled, joyful, and godly life. That's what... See, hard times in life are going to come. We live in a sinful world. There's going to be illness. There will be illness. There will be trouble. There will be hard times. There will be death. There will be suffering. But the difference is when we have the Lord and we're following him and we allow wisdom to we hear her reproof and allow her to pour her life to us, we have that fulfilled, joyful, godly life that can withstand those times. Ecclesiastes 7.12 says, For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is 
that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. That's an interesting verse. But wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Ecclesiastes 7.19 says, Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. <laughs> Solomon knew about some wisdom. So first of all, when we, when we heed wisdom, she'll pour out her life to us. And secondly, she's going to make our, her words known to you. Verse 23 at the end there, will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Not only will she give life, she will open up her words to you. Have you ever wished you knew the right words to say in a situation? Maybe I should ask it this way. How often do you wish you <laughs> knew the right words in a situation? You know, maybe when someone's talking to you about a struggle with their spouse, what do you say to them? Sometimes it's like, um... Or someone is trying to understand what they are suffering. You know, it's like, I don't understand what's going on. What do you say to them? You know, we've been in those situations. People ask, people want to know why. And what do you say in that? Wisdom can teach us her words for our benefit and others. And often, you know how we know the answer? Experience. Experience. You know, I mean, I didn't, I didn't come from a home with divorce in it, but some people have. They can help someone with that. Or me, you know, but opposite, you know, I came from a Christian home. You know, I've seen kids who, you know, they come up in a Christian home, but they have these struggles. They don't understand. I can help them with that because I've experienced that. That's where, the, you know, the wisdom there. And we can learn from others, too. Talk to other people to get that wisdom. So she, make, she pours out her spirit, makes her words known to us. We don't only see what wisdom is trying to say, but the consequences of rejecting the call of wisdom. So here we have wisdom. She's in the busy places. She's calling out, hey, simple, hey, scorners, hey, fools, foolish, come to me. She's reproving them, saying, hey, you're going the wrong way. Listen to my reproof. I'm going to pour my spirit. I'm going to pour my life to you. I'm going to give you my words. But she also says here what happens if not. So next is the price for rejecting wisdom. The price for rejecting wisdom. Verses 24 and 25. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded but ye have said it not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. So what happens? So what happens is the price for rejecting wisdom will come from ignoring wisdom. We can refuse to listen. We can ignore her hand stretched out to us. We can esteem her words as nothing those things that she's crying out to us, those things everywhere we see, those points that we can learn from wisdom, we can, we can treat it as nothing. We can even disregard her reproof. In other words, I'm fine the way I am, is what we would be thinking in that, for, for those. If we think, I'm fine the way I am, that's ignoring wisdom. We can do this. We have that choice. God has given us the ability to choose what we were going to do. We can choose that, but it's going to cost us down the road. And this directly applies to those who do not know God. I mean, a lot of times what wisdom is calling to is those who don't know God, but I believe this also applies to those who know God. We can, as a child of God, choose wisdom or we can choose to ignore it. So, in verse 25 there, set not, we can, agree, we can ignore it. Verse 26 through 30, if we ignore wisdom, here's what happens. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call unto me, upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised 
all my reproof. Here's the consequence for ignoring wisdom is that wisdom will not be found in the time of trouble. Instead of help, wisdom will laugh at our problems. She said, hey, I've been calling to you. You ignored me. Now you want me. Nice try, buddy. Sounds cruel, doesn't it? But she was calling constantly. Instead of comfort, wisdom will mock at us when we're in fear, destruction, and distress. Basically, the things that we could have avoided because when we would have listened to wisdom come upon us, and she's like, I'm not going to pull you out of that. I am not going to rescue you out of the consequences of your choices. That's, and that is really counterculture today. Our culture is really just rescuing everyone from their consequences. Loan forgiveness, no consequences at school. My goodness, you know, I, I've seen the public school system. There is no consequences for anything anymore. Um, and, you know, just there's hardly consequences in this world for anything. That's not what wisdom says. Basically, at the point of destruction, if we've ignored it, we'll want wisdom at that point, but it's too late. We had our chance. She tried to warn what was coming, but the other path was chosen instead. And she's trying to warn to avoid that very thing. So here's what happens rejecting wisdom. Wisdom won't be found in the time of trouble, and then lessons and regrets will have to be learned the hard way. Look at verses 31 and 32. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Instead of heeding reproof of wisdom and learning from her, if we ignore it, now we have to learn the things we could have learned the hard way. <laughs> experience the hardships ourselves. In other words, reaping what we sow. It's a simple principle, but it's so powerful. Wisdom says, we will be filled with what we dished out. Uh, in Proverbs, I believe it says, he that rolls a stone, it we're going to come back on him again. <laughs> it's gonna, things are going to come back. This is a principle in the Bible, sowing and reaping. The way of the simple, wisdom saying, hey, don't go this way. The way of the simple, or being easily swayed by things, not being solid in the word of God. The simple, the way of the simple leads to death and destruction. Literally. <laughs> said, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them. It'll be your downfall. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. I mean, and David cries out so many times, why do the wicked prosper? Well, a lot of times in foolishness, there is great physical gain. There's prosperity, but it will end up destroying. And wisdom is warning us to turn away from these things. She does not want to see us destroyed. But instead of destruction, she offers the benefits for listening. Wisdom, she doesn't just end there. She says, turn at my reproof. If you ignore it, here's what you can look forward to. But in one verse, she gives the benefits of it. Look at verse 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Two simple things, but so full of, so full of wisdom. If we heed wisdom, if we look at what she's crying to us and we learn from those things, and we listen to her reproofs, we can dwell safely. Again, I don't think this is free from troubles and problems. Job did not experience that, and for no fault of his. It's not that we're free from trouble and problems, but what she, wisdom is saying here is many heartaches and troubles can be avoided by following the way of wisdom. There won't be destruction. There won't be your choices causing your downfall and death and destruction. Those can be avoided. This is being secure and safe no matter what life brings us. This is being secure in God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom.
Look at verse 29. For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is part of wisdom. It's all integrated. That's why it's in the Word of God. That's why it's in Proverbs. (laughs) Is being secure and safe in the Lord, no matter what life brings us, that is what wisdom brings us. Dwelling safely. And also not fearing evil. In verse 33, and shall be quiet from the from fear of evil. Now, evil here does not mean like sin or things that are sinful. It means things that are disagreeable, bad, um, troublesome. Things that are really trouble us. We won't have to, when we hear the reproofs of wisdom, we hear the words of wisdom, what it does is it brings that peace in the bad times that are going to come. It's that peace. It's that, again, I said that fulfillment from the Word of God, that fulfillment in our life, and we don't have to be afraid of what's coming in life. I mean, how many people want this peace in their lives? I mean, who doesn't want peace in turmoil. And we have, in this country, we have ways to deal, we're trying to deal with that. Medication, psychology, um, alcohol, drugs, we're trying to deal with that. We're trying to get that peace in the midst of, of life. How many people, though, want that peace, they're given the way to it, yet refuse it? Wisdom's crying in the streets, in the place of concourse, in the city, everywhere, without. She is all, always crying. People want that peace, but they don't listen. Even God's children. How often is wisdom crying to us? We want that, but we won't turn to that for that peace, for that, for that wisdom. And how we can help people from the word of God, find that wisdom, that fear of God, that salvation of their souls, that is really the answer to their problems in life. Again, that carnival man I was telling you about, he was calling the people to come to the game. And I noticed, it's, it's, the parallel is interesting. Most ignored him, but some did. Some listened. Wisdom is calling you going to hear it or are you going to reject it? Rejecting wisdom means you won't have it when you need it the most. But hearing wisdom brings safety and confidence when life tries to go out of control. Wisdom is calling to us everywhere. Will you hear it? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for just this portion of Proverbs and what Solomon is writing to us. And Lord, what you're writing to us. And Lord, I just pray that Lord, we would just hear that wisdom. It's constantly calling to us. And there's so many situations in life where just we don't know things to do, but Lord, we can have that wisdom of you. Lord, I pray we'd seek that. And Lord, I just pray for the services to come. Lord, that you would be lifted up, Lord, in the giving, the praying, the the singing, and the preaching, and the fellowship, and everything, Lord, that you would be honored and glorified in everything that's done here today. In Jesus' name, amen.